Hello friends and welcome back to Shadows of Loathing. If my voice sounds a little rough, it is definitely not because I'm having so much fun with this game that I recorded five episodes in a row. No, couldn't be me. So we have a bank pouch full of meat. 300, what a windfall. A deed. Mm. Now there was also Mm, a mana charge refrigeration coil, which we don't need now, but we might be able to use it later. For I thought we had a fridge handle, so I was looking for a fridge that didn't have a handle, but... Alright, well we have cleared out the refrigerator factory, so I would like to go to Snackle Mills now and shove these people, the fishes. Plus it open. Oh, I don't have anything to cook with? Alright. Is there any herbo code in here? I don't think there is. I feel like we've got to come back here for the sugar. It's just so glistening and ominous. Alright, well, we'll go back to Hiram's. I'm afraid not. What a strange exchange any i don't think like there was a hobo here but i don't think there's any uh hobo code here uh let's check the chop shop one more time as you're walking down one of ocean city's residential streets on the way to where you're going you hear eerie music coming from the upstairs window of a nearby house Ooh, i will continue where i'm going but i want to go to the eerie house it's a zimmer like hand zimmer that's beautiful Hmm, can't craft anything here? No, okay, didn't think so. Just, just triple checking. We'll go back to Gideon's. Uh, a frozen rock. Rusty flakes. Uh, new hobo code here, right? No. I got a net, maybe I can catch those wasps there. Alright, nothing here. Let's go check on Marvin. Ooh, we got some tentacles. So what I really should do is upgrade my, uh, this spell. So I can do more damage. Because it would be very nice to be able to, like, kill two enemies in one go. But I don't think I have anywhere near 100 experience. So. I mean, I don't know. I could have more experience and I think I do. Oh my goodness gracious, ow, you didn't both have to hit me. At least Shelly heals me for two. Shelly is the best turtle. Yay! Alright. Elva. Elva. Risk. Eventually I'll get into one of these houses. Marion. Myrtle. Ben. Theory. Tyra. Rat. Okay, well, I tried. Uh... Let's go to Mrs. Rooster's, because it's like the last one in the bottom. Ooh, spin and taffy. It won't make a difference to you watching, but my flux just turned off and it got very bright. <laughs> they're called tulips, but in this case there are three of them. Ooh, look at that. Sorted grease. You can tell this is used for something horrible because of their proximity to uh, salespeople. Ooh, what have we got? This nice lady, but she only likes salesmen. Not very useful, but alright, this is Brewster. Okay, well, let's go in. As you enter the boarding house, you discover some kind of hullabaloo or perhaps a kerfuffle. A stern looking middle aged lady is surrounded by six agitated men all talking over each other. 
Just went in. Gentlemen, I essentially settled down at once. You won't get to the bottom of this with you off. Acting like panicked school children. Ms. Brewster, you've got to call the cops. Ha. What this town calls police, I wouldn't trust to solve a jigsaw puzzle, let alone a serious crime. And I won't have those hooligans turning my house upside down. But there's been a murder. Someone has to do something. What you can do is go to your room. Don't you think? Good gracious. The men file up their stairs. A bash, but still fidgeting nervously. Talk to the woman. Uh, excuse me. I'm sorry, I don't have any vacancies. Well, I suppose I do, but I can't let you have the room until this whole mess has been sorted out. One of those men said something about a murder? Yes, it's absolutely ghastly. One of my ledgers was murdered in the night. I nobody has saw, heard or saw anything. I'm practically at my wit's end. I can help. My man's Caroline Turner. Kind of an independent investigator sort of thing? Oh, like the Belgian fellow in the mystery novels. Uh, sure, yes. Those are good ones. Well, that's marvellous. If you can solve the mystery, I can pay you quite reasonably. Okay, it's a deal. Thank goodness. What can you tell me about the victim? He was a traveling salesman. All of my lodges are traveling salesmen. What did he sell? Oh, they come and go so frequently. I'm afraid I haven't the foggiest idea. Well, how did he die? I'm not sure. The body is missing. Look, you better just go and look for yourself. He wasn't greasy. I locked the door so that no one would, no one would mess in there. All right. Yes. Tiny oil paintings. Bathroom door is locked. But the flowers saw nothing. Ooh, there's a telephone. Do not use a phone. And the Mrs. Brewster is allowed in the kitchen. Yeah, let's see what it says. Room 2C. Knock on the door. You should probably check out. Okay, I need to go check 3C. But is there anything else in here? Oh. Ooh, there's some shoes. Some high heel shoes have been carelessly left in the hallway. You're not sure which aspect of this would upset Mrs. Brewster the most. Take the shoes. I'll be safer with you. Extra high heels. So it's in 3C, but let me check these plants. <laughs> and the two leafy point plants are holding the Fondy one hostage. The audacity. Alright. You unlock the door and put the key in the secret pocket used for things that won't ever need to be referred to again. Holy crap. There's a massive pool of blood on the floor, and like Mrs. Rusa said, there's nobody in sight. Hmm. The window is locked, so the killer must have come from inside the house. Ooh, there's also a mirror. Can I fish? A handful of clean water. Check yourself for clues. Hi, Caroline. Smile. Hey there, good looking. Can I fish in the blood? Is that what that was just implying? Holy jeez, is there even this much blood inside a person? Fish. Ah, nothing. Must be shallower than it looks. Nothing interesting about that, except that it next time has a pool of blood. The wardrobe is locked. Hmm. This rug looks pretty ordinary. Check underneath it. You roll up the rug and- Whoa, what the heck? There's a crazy cult diagram underneath it. The lines and glyphs appear to have been burned into the floor. You can see little blobs of melted candle wax at the points of the dodecagram and it is smells faintly of weird incense. Was this some kind of ritual killing? Great. Like a regular old murder wasn't enough. Alright. Well. Hmm. It looks like all we're gonna get. Then let's go investigate. Be best if I report back. Okay, fine, I'll report back. Oh, Mrs. Brewster, I'd had a look in 3C. Did you find anything? I found a huge pool of blood. It was really gross. Did you find anything else? Yes, actually. An occult ritual circle. What? Oh my goodness, you think there was some kind of black magic sacrifice? I'm afraid it looks that way. Yes, ma'am. Well, I've always felt the lodge's religion was no business of mine, but I won't stand for this one bit. Are any of your lodges involved with the occult, do you know? Hmm. I do recall that one of them specialized in selling occult supplies and paraphernalia, but I'm afraid I don't remember which one. You'll have to ask around. Kidoki. No response. Door locked. Room 2D. But they're really all 2D if you think about it. Haha, <laughs> that's a good joke. You knock on the door and a nervous looking salesman peeks out. I'm warning you I'm armed. Oh, I know you. Yeah, I think we might be full. You sell derringers, right? That's right. Yes, you should buy one. There's a murder on the loose. Actually, I'm investigating the murder. Oh, thank God somebody is. What do you know about the other salesman, Hugh? I know there's a guy who sells occult stuff. I give him a wide berth, though. All I know about him is that he doesn't live in the room below the sunglasses salesman. Okay. Neither of them are victim, by the way. Okay. Ah, oh, puzzles. Great. Who's there? I'm not opening the store with the killer on the roof. I'm investigating the matter. Do you have any information that would help? There's a salesman here who specializes in cult stuff. That seems serious. It's just me. Which room is he in? I'm not sure, but it isn't one above me. He doesn't live at the same end of the hall as the victim either. Uh, okay, I know you. Hey, yeah, you're the guy selling pants from before, right? That's right. Wanna buy some pants? Alright, now I'm investigating. Oh, yeah. 
Mm, grizzly business. Do you know the other salesman that lives here? Not really, just the guy who sells the little Daringa pistols. He was complaining about the guy who lives right above him. That's Trinket and Bolo guy, because he keeps drinking rac racket, dropping stuff on the floor at night. That probably doesn't help you much, though. That's something. Thanks. Alright. Assuming my powers of deduction are correct, that means he's in 3D. Something I can- oh hey, we meet again! Oh hey, yeah, that sunglasses guy! That's me, baby! What can I do you for? Well, I'm investigating the murder. Oh, no kidding? Yeah, I was hoping you could give me some information about the people who live here. Hmm, I don't really know any of these guys. There's a fellow that sells jerks and gags somewhere on this floor, I think, and there's a guy that sells pants, but all I can tell about you is him is that he isn't the guy right below me. Sorry. Thanks, anyway. Alright. I'm investigating the murder. Well, I pretty much keep to myself. All I know about the other salesman is the one who sells jerks and gags isn't the one who lives next to the door. The one who lives above the one who sells brushes. What? Well, nothing. Thanks. Hello, I'm investigating the model. I don't know any of these guys. I think there's a guy who sells brushes. His name is with the guy who sells pants. Okay. Dead guy. I'm pretty sure it's this guy. It's just the brushes salesman that lives next to the pants salesman. Mm hmm. The one who sells jerks and gags isn't the one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. I'm pretty sure it's 3D. The two guys that jerks and gags sell who lives on this floor and a pants walker who lives right below. Jerks. Oh no. Pants. Guy who sells syringes lives underneath the guy who sells trinkets. The guy who sells occult stuff doesn't live above me, and he doesn't live at the same end of the hall as a victim. Wait, wait, oh my gosh, I'm gonna need, like, a piece of paper to write all this down. Okay. I will get a piece of paper. I don't have a pen. That doesn't help me. I'm gonna have to pause for a second. Alright, I have a pen. I'm prepared to take notes this time. So, this is the Derenga Salesman. The occult salesman doesn't live in the room below sunglasses, and they're both still alive. Okay, so sunglasses is not- okay. Not under sunglasses. Okay. 2D is Derringer. Alright. Well, 3C is the mur murdered victim, so knock on the door. 2C, the door is locked. Okay, 2B. 2B is the pants guy. Wanna buy some pants? The guy who sells derringers lives right underneath the guy who sells trinkets. Derringers and trinkets. Got it, thank you. But the guy who sells occult stuff doesn't live above me, so it can't be this guy. And he doesn't live at the same end of the hall as the victim, so it can't be that guy. So he's got to be 2C, 3B, or 2A. Alright, hold on, let me go up. 3D. The brushes salesman lives next to the pants salesman. So. He could be either that one, or that one could be brushes. Alright, thank you very much. That guy is dead. Baby. The salesman who sells jerks and gags isn't the one who lives next to the one... The salesman who sells jerks is not the one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. I'm coming back to you. Sun okay, and 3A is sunglasses. I need a refresher. The only two guys I met around here are Jerks and Gag Seller who lives on this floor and a pants guy who doesn't live below me. So that makes you the three be the jerks guy. Alright, let me try this one again. You are the jerks though. Isn't the one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes? The guy who sells jerks and gags isn't the one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. 
which is you. You're the jokes guy. Underneath you is the pants guy. So you don't live next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. I'm so confused. The salesman who sells jokes and gags, which is this guy, is not the one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. But you have to be. Next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. Because 3C or 2C or 2A has to be the brushes guy. Right? Hang on. I'm so sorry for all this back and forth, but it's... He doesn't live above me. And he doesn't live at the same hole as the victim. Unless the jerk guy is this. Okay, this guy is a question mark. This guy is a question mark. Oh my goodness. Okay, TB. Pants. Derringers. Right under the guy who sells trinkets. There's nothing in there. The cult salesman doesn't live in the room below the sunglasses salesman, and they're both still alive. Okay, so he can't be 2A. Which would make 2A the brushes guy? Which would make 2C the villain? But that seems so suspicious, it's because it's like the one guy that doesn't answer. Uh. Brushes, sales, and next one to the pants person. It's either got to be... Salesman who sells jerks and gags isn't the one who lives next to the one... The salesman who sells jerks and gags isn't the one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. Okay, so the one that sells brushes is 2A. If you live above 2A, it's Sunglasses Guy. It is not the one who lives next to the one. So that's gonna make 2C the jerk guy, which makes 3B the occult guy. I think 3B is the occult guy. I'm gonna try that because I'm getting confused and this has been too long. Okay. Excuse me, Mrs. Rooster, who lives in 2C? They didn't answer the doors locks. So that's because 2C is my room. Oh, okay. So. Can I have a look inside? Certainly not, that's private, and you can possibly imagine I would kill one of my own muggers. That would be terrible for business. I guess you have a point there. Okay, well, that ruins everything. Um, well, if the owner is in 2C, then that means the brushes guy's got to live next to the pants guy, which makes him 2A, which makes the jerk guy. So, oh, the guy... The, Okay, I figured out who the cultist is. Um, maybe if we confront him. I won't have you accusing the wrong fellow. Well, doesn't that mean that 3C is the occultist guy? Uh, are you sure you know which one it is? I won't have you accusing the right fellow. Shall we gather everyone together at the scene of the crime? So you can do a dramatic reveal like in the novels. I'm sure if you want. I must say this whole matter business is really dreadful, but it's the most interesting thing to happen here in years. Um. Wait. It is this guy, right? I'm just going to pause for one second and just double check my own notes. Alright. I did some thinking and I checked my notes and the recording and realized that I'd made a mistake in my logic. So... I assumed it was so you could tell us who did the murder. Yeah, that was my guess too. Yeah, yeah. Right. As you can see by this weird stuck on the floor, this killing probably had a cult significance. Therefore, the most likely candidate in the occult's good salesman, who is the guy in 3B. What? No, I mean, yes, I do sell occult supplies, but that isn't even one of my circles. Are you actually accusing me of murder? No, I'm pretty sure I didn't kill anyone. Suddenly, the wardrobe door flies open and a salesman jumps out. Haha, <laughs> I fooled you all pretty good because this guy sells jokes and gags and stuff. That's right. How do you like my new giant fake rubber pool of blood? Isn't it a scream? Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Well, let me tell you. Let me give you something for being such a good sport, kid. We're in good health. 
I got a flick string. Hmm. Now if you'll excuse me, I gotta roll this load back up. And nine people in this tiny room is eight too many. Return to the lobby. Well, I must say that went quite satisfactorily. Here's your pay, young lady. You've earned it. Thanks. Glad to be of help. I'd still have a call if I ever need your services again, but I think one exciting thing happening here over here is is quite sufficient. If it happens again, I'm just going to throw everyone out. Good idea. Can I talk to you again? Oh, yes. Is there something else you needed? Uh, can I use your bathroom before I go? I've been here kind of a long time and... Yes, yes. All right. Here's the key. Yes. Bathroom key. Nothing worth going upstairs for. There we go. You return the key to Miss Rooster. Go on in. Yeah, bathroom. There's a little sign on the medicine cabinet that says, Take whatever you need. How generous. Most of the rivers are the stuff for people who actually live here. Grab some stuff. A styptic pencil and rhino balm. Uh, Mrs. Brewster probably bought this bathtub from one of her boarders. Fish. Let's fish in the tub. Soggy used bandage. Hmm, that's really good. A glob of wet hair. Girths, girths. Handful of dirty water. I've caught everything that was in here. Check yourself out. Hi, Caroline. Smile. Frown. Oh, what's wrong? Why I water? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, freak out. Blah, 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 blah. I'll just assume this looks good. Go back to normal. Can I flush in the toilet? 15 experience? What is my experience going? 108? 180? 180? Gee. Jesus, I have smelt. Yeah, let's read this one. Uh, squint it. Oh, two more damage. Alright, now I've got the time for squinting. What does this one do? Two more damage. So this would make it five. I'm gonna make this one seven. Yeah, let's read this. Squint at it. You read the epilogue, and you're glad you did. It describes even stinkier cheeses in the main book. Your wrinkle your nose so hot at the thought of them that your nose knocks the book into a nearby sewer grate. Very stinky. Well, we're always close to upgrading our other spell as well. Um, I want to go back to Plunkett Street and collect a sample of glowing ooze and present the deed to the speakeasy. And I should also probably decurse my pocket watch. Um, yes. I don't like the sound of that. Oliver is gone. The hand up went extremely bad. Badly. Yeah, that too. You go over the events of the fridge factory. Fancy Dan makes a variety of faces at various points in his story because Fancy Dan is a good listener. Show him the deed. Oliver was carrying this with him. Dan skims the deed. Hmm. It says here that ownership of the speakeasy is automatically transferred to whoever has physical possession of the seed. Huh. Is that legal? No, oh, this is legal. Oh yeah. I guess you're my new boss, baby. Let's have one drink to bond the old boss and another one to celebrate the new one. Good idea. I guess we ought to change the name since, well, Oliver's place is no longer Oliver's place. I suppose that's right. Got any ideas? Well, you could grow traditional and just call it Caroline's place, or something hip-like of the purple door. Or something incisive and avant-garde, like, I don't know, noblesse oblige. I kind of like the purple door. Oh, that was just an example, but you're the boss. Now to business. To business? We make beer in-house, so that's safe, but we're out of everything else, and based on your story, I'd say the stuff at the factory isn't safe to use. Yeah. If you can find booze or mixes or garnishes, bring it back here. Any idea where to get started with that? No, but you might check with Barnaby. Barnaby? Uh, the milky-eyed slot at the table by the wall. He doesn't see very well, but he's got a nose for news and a sixth sense for booze. He might know where you can find what you're looking for. Thanks. I found some full grapes. Full grapes, eh? When my life gives you full grapes, make full wine, baby. Sounds like a plan. Ooh, okay. Uh, let's leave. And ask about Barnaby. Buy him a drink. To seal to its essence, a lake is just a valley abandoned. I see, I think I see. The lake is deep enough to drown dreams, but not the sins of his grandfather. Okay. Are you gonna just repeat? They try, but they'll never dam up the flow. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'll leave you to your milkiness. It won't budge. Okay, so I still can't go in there. Even though I own the place. That's fine. Was there something else I wanted to do? Yes, I 
feel like I might be able to maybe get close. Maybe not, but maybe I can get close to the moxie, moxie I need if I do the sunglasses. I need six, I think. Yeah, let's equip this one. Why not? Mm -hmm. Okay, you know what? I was wrong. I'm just so tired. It makes you look like a crab. Okay, so I guess the silly walk is just in there. Alright, so let's put that back on. We will get there eventually. If my math is correct too. Yeah, eight and six. That's gonna take a while. <laughs> let's go decast my pocket watch. The dangerous pocket watch. The machine starts the pocket watch up into its doom and begins its strange and loud work. The pocket watch is pulled this way and that, and it seems to come and knits and it sucks cuts, and its three hands are forcibly bent back, and you saw you hear screams. And then it's done. The watch falls into your lap, and I have set to 62901. Uncursed pocket watch. Okay. Wanna project your consciousness in it? Why not? In your mind's eye, you see the hands of a pocket watch spin back on themselves with jittery violence. With each revolution, the face of the watch itself expands until it's larger than you and the building and the street. The whole world lives in the blur of fast-running hands, in which you see life go by in reverse time. Submarines turn to longships, cities to stone dwellings, cowboys to courtesans. You're traveling faster and faster to the beginning of time itself, and there's no telling where this ride will end. Hold on tight. Ooh, dinosaur. I'm the dinosaur. I'm not going to eat the cat. If there's two salad forks, no, you lack the opposable thumbs necessary to turn the door knob. You're completely contained in here unless you figure out how to open doors. Break the door down. I'm a big dinosaur. Hunts. You slept your prehistoric tummy against the wood, but it doesn't even make a dent. Maybe that's why the dinosaurs went extinct. Couldn't open doors. Raw. Eat Charles. No, I don't want to eat Charles. I'll eat the chessboard. Chomp chomp. Check for messages. Good. You check the message pad next to the phone. There's a note for you. Dinosaur. No phone number. Eat the phone. Chomp. Caroline, attend thy temple. 200 dexterity. To do. Open a door. Eat Jessica. Eat Charles. I can't eat everybody. I guess I have to eat everybody. Sorry, Gabby. Oh, that horse what you got all horns and rattles being dipping into the nose paint again. Gabby doesn't talk like that. Uh, shut the pod and shower is here is. You open the door for me. Oh, I don't know. Never had a puzzle for Cat Caroline. That's gonna be right funkified. Hey Gabby, I'm a dinosaur. Whoop up, pew pew, and the quickest door in the rest, sure enough, leave. Sorry not our horse mate. Huh. Eat Jessica. Which strange is the flick seat? Never mind, for the sun turns this to the horizon and I grow ever the more in need of assistance. Understand whilst you sleep under this roof, thou art my lodger, and a single show on this paper lot is by me required. When did you start talking like this? A provocative remark, madam, and by the email maid. Can you open the doors? Curious, madam, for I don't believe the doors to be locked. Well, what do I know? Now we need to find the telephone table to hit a key. Okay, well, I can't sign anything. I don't have enough dexterity. Can I eat? No, I don't want to eat the cat. Can you open the door for me? Hey, easy does it, baby. We're all hungry. Oh, what's that critical gobbles? Please help. I'm a dinosaur. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Open the door. Eat cat. Mm, but that would be wrong. Eat cat. Hmm. I can't eat the cat. Real groovy pocket watch. 
I like the way it takes to cook. Do you understand me? Yes. A lot of power in that time face. A lot of power. Would you make a promise to me, baby? Would you promise not to throw that power away? A little good. You can do with that groovy power, baby. Charles doesn't call me baby. I hear you, kitty cat. Uh, let's do it, man. Shake on it. I can't shake. I have no dexterity. That's a terrible. Oh. I have a dexterity. I have a dexterity. I have a dexterity! Blow the drawers! Oh, behave. No, shan't. The drawer is locked. Shake hands. Gain the dexterity. Alright, alright, I understand now. Can I eat the table? Alright, good, 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 good. I can't eat that. Eat the cat. I can't eat the cat. Leave. Eat a paper. Alright. Read a book. Add to the list. Okay. Can I sign the thing now? Sign my name. Open the door. Yeah. Do you meet at last? With I looking the older man, though you are far older than I shall have been. I'm not old. Really, I offer you an amiga. You, the beginning of time, and I its end. Will you walk with me, dear friend, to watch the death of our world and the birth of another? I'm just trying to cross a pocket watch, pal. Raw. Ooh. Tick, tick. The hands of the young cast pocket watch beat on, boats with the current born correctly into the future. You pull the pocket watch to look at it. It's gained some luster. Ooh, the cast has lifted. Time is in its rightful home, and you no longer have a tail. I wish I had a tail. Let her. Okay, good. She's still here. She purrs as she goes back to sleep. Alright, anything I can do here? I found the watch. It was complicated. I'd be more surprised if you told me it was simple. Well, you know the drill. Strap it on and jump in the uncursing machine. I already did. I mean, it's pocket watch, so I didn't strap it. Good, good. Get the guys some sleep. Okay, you look like you've been through the ringer. I won't dispute that. Go to sleep. I could go to sleep. Wait. You got a weird feeling about Mario's desk for some reason. Investigate. Nestled in among the books and papers is a book of old but still valid postage stamp. We've been missing. They're surrounded with a haze of weird shadowy energy, but you can cl clearly see illustrations of cute dogs on them. Wait a minute, cute dogs? That's just like the stamp that survived your luggage file. Oh dang, of course, that stamp is what destroyed your luggage. All your best stuff was in there. You could close your teddy bear. That tears it. The shadow business has become personal. I mean, it was personal already because of Murray being your uncle and all, but now it's extra personal. Grr. What's up? These stamps. These stamps have the shadow gunk on it, and one of them killed my luggage. Oh my gosh, I guess that was my fault. I ran out of stamps and I found these inside Murray's desk. I didn't even think to test them. I'm so sorry. It's not your fault. It's whatever's causing the stamp shadow stuff. I'm definitely gonna have to put a stop to it there. Wait, how many of these stamps have you used? Just the one, thankfully. The rest must have already been gone when Murray found them. Well, that's good news at least. Hey Caroline, before you go to bed, I need to to approve a new tenant for the storefront next door. Huh? What? Why is that up to me? Someone's gotta do it. There's three applicants for the place. Okay, what are they? The first applicant is advanced pants. It doesn't say what they plan on selling, but I have to assume it's pants. The second is Bertram's Bakery. Bert's a good buddy of mine from my restaurant days. He makes a good loaf. And the last applicant is truncheons and bludgeons. That fellow is really excited about weaponry. Bakery sounds good. Okay, I'll get them moved to the next storefront ready for applicants. Thanks, Charles. Hey, it's that rogue from the boarding house. Mrs. Rooster must have had it sent to you as an additional gesture of gratitude. All because she hates the way it looks and things have cursed. Either way, score. Hey, our house is starting to look pretty cool. Alright. Let's go see. Ooh, a spooky dream. Oh, my luggage is on fire again. Even my stupid spooky dream. All your favorite pants. Gone. It's Jeff, the kid who used to bully him in third grade. Make amends. Hey, Jeff, listen. I know hard feelings, okay? I understand in retrospect that you must have problems at home, and I just want you to know everything is okay now. Jeff sorts the overdue library book out of your hands. I see. Since this is just a dream version of you, you're still as much of a jerk as you were in third grade. Jeff suddenly punches you, knocking out of your teeth. Hey, if this is actually happening, I'd be really mad. You pick up your teeth and walk away. Your teeth. Huh. What a jerk. 
You better get away from it before he knocks out something more important than your dream teeth. It's the creeper creamer lady from the refrigerator factory, now in literal nightmare form. Here's pasta. Excuse me, I need to get past you. Why, are you in a hurry to wake up? Darling, it's creamer. We should be making merry. Creamer with someone's away. Oh, but it's always creamer in dreams, do. Merry Crimber then. Merry Crimber, dearie. I don't have pro didn't have time to properly introduce myself before. I'm Doc Noel, and an affection as goofy as her name she curtsies. Doc Noel, huh? You're really taking this murder seriously. Right down to your weird evil looking Crimber hat. Her smile falls was a little evil looking. I told you the refrigerator factory, it's just the wait. She points the weird device that she's holding at her hat. It starts beeping in a fast irregular pattern. You're telling me that you can see the special Crimber magic with your eyes? Uh yes, if that's what it is. That is decidedly unfestive news. I better talk to the president. You want to talk to Calvin Coolidge about your crimber hat? I want to talk to the real president about you. I see. Yes, that's the problem, dear. And I'll see you soon with a solution. She scowls and jumps off the edge of whatever this is you're standing on. This won't end well for her. This is Brewster's home. Ooh. The bookshelf is not behaving the way bookshelves do when you're awake. Take a closer look. You grab a book at random and the bookshelf pops out of existing. It's the melting mind. No, but I had Freddy hold it. I held Freddy. Okay, I can't have myself because I don't have Freddy. Who is Freddy? I'm gonna find Freddy and I'm gonna keep all my stuff in the nightmare world and it's gonna be great. Oh no, it's the FBI. Alarmingly, a man in an expensive suit is standing at the foot of your bed. What the heck? Who are you? You may call me Don Tobleron. I represent a certain organization of, shall we say, like minded criminals. Organized criminals? Like the mob? Wait, you're the Don of the local mob? The mob boss in my room, personally? No, 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 I'm not the Don. That is merely my nomenclature. It's an abbreviation for Donald. Oh, that's confusing. You have a fedora. I need it. It's been a matter of some confusion. Some confuscation, yes. I do have a sobriquet, but I don't care for it very much. What is it? Donithiosaurus. I'm gonna hazard a guess I call you that because you like long words. That is very astute of you. Of course, this astution comes as no surprise to me. My associates tell me you handled yourself well during the conflagration at the refrigerator manufactorium. Do you actually know thesaurus? I am here to propound you for your consideration in a certain proposition. Come again? I'm here to make you an offer. Oh, can I refuse it? Certainly. Although your refusation would be, so we shall say, unadvisory. That's the offer. From time to time, my collegiates and I have certain requirements but lack the necessary manpower to achieve them. At such junctures, we make lucrative <laughs> arrangements with certain capable individualists. We find ourselves at this moment at a juncture such as the junctures I have thus subscribed. So you want me to do contract work for the mob? Exactingly. Okay, sure, why not? An excellent decision if I articulatize such. So what happens now? Just sit tight as they say. We will call upon you telephonically. He gives your cut nod and leaves the room for the window. It takes him three or four tries to work the latch. Okay then. Mm -hmm. I need more knickknacks. I don't have any knickknacks. I've gotten like a throne and a glove of steel and a rug, but no knickknacks. Hey there, Caroline. How'd you sleep? Fine until I'm up. I crawled in my bedroom window. Oh yeah, that window is pretty lousy. Anyway, the next antique I need you to find is a compass. The direction's kind, not the circle's kind. I didn't get that one. The detector trend says it's out near Crystal Green Lake. I don't know where that is, but I bet it's too far to walk. Do you have a car I can borrow? No, but I have something even better than that. Two cars? A bus pass. The stuff out the front is your gateway to a whole wide world of adventure. So, thanks. And where do I do when I get there? Unfortunately, I couldn't get more specific reading than near the lake. Something about the place is making the instruments grow. Screw here, take this map. Crystal Dream Lake postcard and a lighthouse. This is a postcard. It has a map of the lake on it. It has a picture of the lake on it. Yeah, that's what a map is. A picture of a place. I guess I can't argue with that logic. So, I, no, I don't want to go to the Crystal Dream place though. I'm not done. Hey, Gabby. How you doing? This is fun getting into fights. You like a good fight, Gabby? Yes. There are not usually so many fights around here. What an excitement it is. I noticed you do a lot of slapping. Do you know how to make a fist? What? Here, look, you curl your fingers in like this and put your thumb over them here. That's a fist. You squeeze that all tight and hit people with these knuckles here. It's more powerful than a slap. Wow, cute as a peach. This whole time I could have upgraded Gabby. So that's three additional damage. All right, let me talk to her again. How's it holding? It's all of the berries. Small talk. Got my gums in there. We have read these ones. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, let's leave. Okay, well, at least we upgraded her a little bit. Jessica looks pretty busy, but then she always does. How does this help in signing Murray? Um, not to dispute the importance of collecting these little artifacts or anything, but I'm worried about Uncle Murray. How is this helping find him? 
Oh, I guess I didn't really explain that. See, the detective from a thousand feet, we only got really got it running after Mark disappeared. He always searched the artifacts in more hands-on ways. Research, networking, following rumors, that kind of thing. The last artifact he opened after, it could be basically anywhere. But the detector tron only detects the nearest artifacts. I see, so you figure if we pick him up in order, eventually we'll get to the one he was looking for. Right, I wish Yaheli had left a nerd about where it was going, but I guess either he thought it was too dangerous and didn't want to let was following, or he was rushed off all excited like a kid in a toy store. That's not right for you, you know that tracks. There's a message called Don T with a phone number. I'll call the mob. Salutation. Who is telephoning my town quiet? Hi Don, it's me Caroline. Ah, you reciprocated my mission, Commendable. Yeah, what's up? There is an assignment of which I require your proclamation. An assignment? Rather comedic sort. I might refer to it as an undertaking. Ha ha ha. Oh, I kill someone? Okay. We are eager to use appreciated. Permit me to elaborate upon the missing parametrics. Uh-huh. There is an antiquated distillery near Crystal Dream Lake. Grandpa Joe's distillery to be precocious. It was abandoned when prohibitioning began, albeit with its liquor manufacture recading equipment attacked. A group contrapositive to our own has claimed it as their territory and wish these blood suckers to be evis evictated with extreme prejudice. So you want me to give the bums rest to a bunch of rival mob greens? There is no underground criminal organization that rides fills out in this vicinity. When I say blood suckers, suckers it is my intention that you will observe the phraseology a high degree of literalness. The group of which I referenced are Nosferatu. What? Nosferatu. Languissa, Strigoi, Dracula's vamp. Hey, vampires, okay, I get it. You're telling me they're actual vampires in this part of the world? Affirmative. They have been a pain in our necks for quite an extensive period of time. Oh, I appear to have inadvertently voiced another witticism. I didn't notice. Alright, I'll take care of your vampires. I guess it isn't that much weirder than the fishermen. Where's the distillery? He gives you the map. Additionally to that, you will be requisitioning the combination for the lock. Is it one, two, three, four? Certainly not. Uh, kindly allow us the credit for a modicum of operational securitizing. We selected the most unassailable combination possible. Nine, 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 nine. All right, bye. All right, I'm gonna pet the cat. Yeah, Calliope's boon. Look at her, she's so happy. All right, do we have any effects on right now? No, because we went to sleep. Oh, man. That's all right. How much... I have 90, so we are close to being able to... Okay, I need to take the bus. Oh, my teeth. Ooh. I'm not sure what kind of book this is. Avant-garde social commentary, psychedelic research journal, total nonsense created by the random nighttime firings of your own neurons, grants complex skill, mind melt. Mm. Read the weird book, including all the several page long footnotes, the parts in different typefaces and orientations, and the parts written in languages you don't speak. Get a skill mind melt. You can't help but think that there's more to the story than this, though. Maybe you should read it again. If you do, mind melt will also heal you for five HP. Read it again. Yep. You read the book a second time and pick up a few new weird details. You still don't understand most of it, though. Your subconscious must just be a bad writer. It has, you know, created you decided you've had nothing about the book with your mind. Alright, cool. Ooh, muscle. Alright. Let's go. <gasps> That's right, we have a bakery. A blonde flapper cracks her chewing gum that gives you a shocky grin and a little wave. Talk to her. Hey there, kitty cat. You're Caroline Turner, right? That's me. Pleased to meet you. I'm Molly. Molly Buttons, they call me. Charm, so how do you know my name? The boss sent me to lend you a hand and to keep you an eye on me. Savvy? What? Hey now, I put in my two weeks on notice before I left for keeps Kepski? Fair and square. No, not, not that boss, Dora. The boss. The boss? You know. The mob boss. Oh, that the boss. Sheesh, I can't tell you got a screw loose, so if you're just fine with me, I like to keep us people guessing. So, what, you're supposed to partner up with me? That's the deal, McNeil. And do what? What's a 20 something girl like you doing working for the mob anyway? Hey, now, I ain't just a pretty face. She pulls a tummy gun with a full size drum magazine from behind her back, gives it a flip in the air, and catches it with a mag glitter in her eyes. Holy jeez. Put that away before someone sees it. T. Cripes, you have to whisper the boss that you're fine with waving a machine gun around in public? So, are we teaming up or what? Um, I've always got room for a gun to it and cutie pie. Oh, are you flirting with me? Sorry, kitty, you're a cutie too, but I already got a Sheba upstate. Shucks, well, welcome to the party anyway. Molly has joined you as a companion. Peachy, you want I should come with you right now? I'll cool my heels at the purple door for a while. I guess wait for me there. It's rude to keep going waiting, because then I, cause I don't want to get rid of Gabby. Gabby's been a stalwart adventurer this whole time. Bakery, bakery, bakery. 
this must be Bertram. Introduce yourself. Hi, you Bertram. I'm Caroline, a friend of Charles. Well, heck, call me Bert. Please, as Peter. Please, as punch to me to Caroline, any friend of Charles is a friend of mine. In fact, I'll give you the friend discount. Oh, really? Sure. Just assume that all my prices would be 10% higher if we weren't friends. Great. What's for sale? Ooh, things. Alright, I'm gonna buy it. I have some of these. Then I'm gonna buy it. And I'm gonna buy it. And I'm gonna buy it. Because why not? Alright, thank you. Say, Caroline, you wouldn't happen to have 150 pounds of sugar I could borrow, would you? And let me think, no. Well, shucks, if you do not find 150 pounds of sugar lying around somewhere, let me know, okay? I'll do that. Because I know exactly where the sugar is, I knew it. One of those newfangled automatic toasting machines. Ask about it. Is it one of those newfangled automatic toasting machines? Yep. I knew it. It'd be a real time saver if it wasn't such a tricky contraption. Getting the settings right is driving me crazy. You want a slice? I'll give you one for free because there's no guarantee of edibility. Sure. Uh, he puts a piece of ferret in and pushes down a lever and then I get a slice of burnt toast. So I'm gonna have to twiddle, twiddle the knob some more. Thanks anyway. A little sign on these pies says not for sale. Not for sale. I guess we get to like fix up the street. But before then, that's awesome. I don't have time for this malarkey. Sugar, 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 sugar. Sugar, 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 sugar. A huge band of loose sugar. Grab 150 pounds of it. You find a burl up sack and you put it in. Alright. Let's go back. Nice and easy and quick. I wish I could have more than one companion, just to make it a bit more interesting. Hey Bert, I hope I bought the 150 pounds of sugar that you said you needed. Wow, really? That's great, thanks. It's very heavy. Please take it right now, please. Heck, I bet 150 pounds of anything is really heavy. Please take it. Oof, you weren't kidding, but wow, thanks. Now I can start making cupcakes. Ooh, that sounds good. When will they be ready? Immediately, somehow. Oh man, let's see them. Cupcake. 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 Alright. Asked Bert about it. Okay, don't be greedy. One piece of toast a day. That makes sense. Didn't mean to come in here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take the bus. Alright, I think that's everything here. I haven't got any new hats, so... Let's go to Goldthwaite Park, finally, after all this time. Make the joke a bit more naughty. Oh boy, so many things. Alright, hello. Park groundskeeper is infecting a clipboard with the panicked paralysis of someone who has so much fuck to do that he can't do any of it. That was very relatable. Hi there, something wrong? Huh? Oh, sorry, miss. I don't want to seem rude, but I'm too much busy to chat. I'm stuck running this place by myself, and there's about a million things to do. Well, I could use a little extra pocket mate. How about I help out? That would be great, except the new city regulations disallow hiring random part-timers. Since this is a municipal park, and the official government contractors are allowed to work here. There's a law against side quests? Why? Just to be a thorn in my side, far as I can tell, it's not like any of these tasks are dangerous or anything. You got kind of a cagey look on your face when you said that. Okay, well, two of them are dangerous, but that isn't even half. And I submitted a request for help three weeks ago. I still haven't had anything back. Well, you're in luck. I just happen to be an official government contractor. That would be terrific, but I am getting to, to see some proof of that. Um, I will trick him. You believe that I am now official government contractor? Well, you do have the official government contractor wave down path. That was good enough for me. Great. What do you need me to do? Well, that depends. What kind of contractor are you? I'm, uh, a landscaper. Perfect. Our carnivorous plant exhibition in the botanical garden has gone out of control. Huh, when you say out of control, as in this is less of a job for pruning shears and more of a job for <laughs> baseball bat with nails in it. He unlocks the maintenance shed behind him. Can't promise there's anything you'll need in there, but I feel feel free to borrow whatever strikes your fancy. Well, I'll get right on that. Yay. Grand credit statue. Duh. Okay. Oh, I need to clean all of these too, I'm guessing. Okay. Let's go in the maintenance department department and see what we've got. I guess I can only do like one at a time. I made a handmade cookies. Oh boy, oh boy. It's a locker, but it's not locked. Maintenance overalls. They say spare. Miscellaneous junk. A fuse and comfy hat lining. Ooh, comfy. 
herbicides and weed killing chemicals, pack maintenance logs. It wouldn't be interesting even if you weren't pretending to work here. Can't. Mm -mm. No, I think I'll keep my mysticality. When, when did my mysticality get so bad? Is it because I'm that all buffed up? Uh, anything else you need done? I'm uh, an examinator. We've got some real trouble at a Lepidur Territorium. Butterflies eat. A bunch of horrible monsters got in, and I'm afraid they're going to hurt the butterflies. Some of them are more expensive. Can you describe the monsters? Nope. I, I very deliberately did not get a close look at them. That sounds awful, but all right. A statue publisher? Oh, thank God. I wasn't sure that looking forward to doing that one. The birds must be eating leftovers from the old snapple cakes factory. It's horrible. Here's a rag. Great. I guess I can take all of them. I'm a plumber. Oh, that's plum convenient. Ha 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 ha. Our fountain stopped running because it requires a real specific water pressure and the water pressure we get from the municipal water supply has gotten unreliable lately. So I need someone to go down and adjust it. I'll unlock the manhole for you. Okay, sounds easy enough. Last one. A security guard. That's awfully humble for a police officer. What? I mean, since the municipal police force was entirely replaced with contractors, you might as well call yourself a cop, right? All the rest of them do. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. There's a horrible that's been hanging out by the park fountain. I'd like you to move him along. He'll be causing trouble. No, no, such. Everyone likes him. But busking in the park is against city ordinance and rules are rules, you know. Well, all right. Well, all right. We have gotten all of the quests for the park, but... I think I will leave it there because it's been almost an hour and I need drink of water really bad, you might be able to tell. Um, and thank you very much for watching. If you made it this far, I appreciate that, I appreciate you, and I hope that you have a wonderful day, night, weekend, week, whatever it may be, and I will hopefully see you next time. Bye!